Um, so just as a, a reminder, um, before TSSM, there was a, a year-long, more or less year-long study uh, dedicated to, to Titan, um, uh, led by the Applied Physics Lab with JPL uh, and Swiri assistance. Um, uh, Hunter uh, co-chaired the science definition team with me. And this was the first big uh, flagship study. Um, and it was going on in parallel um, with the tandem proposal development uh, in, 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 in Europe. Um, and it was the, really the first thing that you know, laid out these kind of uh, ghastly traceability matrices that covered you know, orbiter and balloon and landed measurements. Um, and uh, you know, we, we made the first set of, of these uh, objectives and had to map them to the decadal survey goals. And prominent among them uh, were uh, these objectives, which are you know, in some sense shared by Cassini, um, to determine the internal structure of Titan, whether it has uh, a subsurface water ocean, how deeply buried beneath the ice that ocean would be, uh, whether the uh, interior is differentiated into a separate uh, iron and rock core, or whether the iron and rock uh, material is mixed. You know, where, does the, uh, where does the atmosphere come from? What do the, um, uh, the noble gases and isotope ratios tell us about that? Um, as uh, and we you know, laid out those, um, those objectives with the different instruments on the three different platforms, uh, orbiter, balloon, and lander, and uh, you know, made various uh, estimates at the relative prioritization among them. Um, it's worth noting that, in fact, and uh, this was a little bit of a surprise to all of us, but when we, when we laid it out, uh, the numbers actually slightly favored the science from a lander uh, over that from a Montgolfier. Um, and we sort of had in mind something vaguely Pathfinder, Beagle-ish, Phoenix-ish uh, that could do geophysical measurements um, and would do uh, surface chemistry. It would acquire surface samples with an arm uh, and uh, survey the, uh, the, the, the land uh, optically. Uh, with the short study time that was available, uh, we just kind of picked the huge sand seas like Belette as a target that at least would be free of rock hazards um, and are large enough areas to, to easily hit. Uh, I mean, sand dunes have, have certain hazards of their own. I mean, they have steep slopes, but if you design a lander with airbags or whatever, um, that's straightforward to accommodate. Um, and of course, inside here, uh, or actually it's on this little thrown off package, we would have a seismometer and a magnetometer package to address some of these internal structure geophysics goals. Now, um, moving forward from, from the Titan um, uh, Explorer 2007 flagship study to TSSM, uh, in TSSM, the uh, Montgolfier was in fact uh, uh, ranked um, more important than the, the surface landed element. Um, it wasn't possible to include a long-lived uh, lander as well as a Montgolfier, and so the uh, TSSM study had this uh, uh, relatively short-lived battery-powered um, lake probe, and the, uh, the geo surface geophysics objectives were more or less uh, cast aside. There was a sort of late-stage rearguard action, which is what, what this talk is about, to see if it would be possible to meet some of those uh, geophysics goals with a sort of piggyback instrumentation package. I mean, the uh, Montgolfier uh, has to perform a hypersonic entry uh, into the Titan atmosphere and has a heat shield, and that heat shield is jettisoned and, of course, falls down to the ground. And it's a big conical aerodynamic uh, structure uh, with a nice large area to mass ratio, so the terminal velocity of that discarded heat shield would be quite low. So you have a, a, you know, something that, that's been built uh, that is going to end up on the surface of Titan at a relatively low velocity. And so the idea was to see whether it would be possible to instrument um, this heat shield as a sort of mini lander. And uh, after some uh, kickoff uh, with the science definition team, uh, a team at uh, DLR in Bremen, uh, um, and in particular uh, Lutz Richter, uh, led a, a short study to see uh, how realistic this might be. Um, so the idea was, uh, as I say, to basically instrument the, the heat shield. Really, the challenge is volume, uh, not so much mass here, but, but, uh, but volume. Um, because this thing was, was kind of uh, outfitting uh, the, the conical or sphere cone, heat shield we kind of nicknamed it the, the geo saucer. Um, the um, um, measurement package will be very simple uh, and more or less omnidirectional. 
uh, a magnetometer to uh, look for the induced magnetic field uh, in, in cooperation with measurements from an orbiter uh, would also constrain a, uh, 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 an internal uh, permanent field, um, a, a beacon for radio science in particular to track uh, the rotation of Titan um, and uh, look for these possible indications of non-synchronous rotation, uh, a seismometer, of course, uh, and perhaps some limited meteorology measurements. I mean, this thing wouldn't have a, a met mast in the conventional uh, lander sense, but uh, might at least be able to uh, make a relative wind measurement from microphonics, for example, and detect uh, uh, any sand saltating or perhaps even rain. Um, and uh, some uh, straw man uh, instrumentation uh, elements were, were scoped out. Um, the, the real challenge is, is volume. I mean, the uh, Montgolfier, uh, has a lot of bits to it, and that's why the, what the heat shield is sized for, um, and the MMRTG is a, is a major volume element in that. Um, so what was sort of left over is this little um, a spherical segment at the, the base of the, uh, the heat shield here, uh, and the challenge was to fit the communications and power, in, in particular power infrastructure in there. The, um, the communications uh, strategy is the same for the rest of TSSM that uh, uh, the vehicle, the orbiter in orbit around Saturn, would be close enough to nonetheless uh, provide a useful relay capability. Uh, basically, there would be patch antennas uh, mounted on the inside of the, the shield, and the instrumentation would be here. The um, device relies on uh, a small radioisotope power source um, for its operation, and a, in fact, a Russian uh, RT, mini RTG uh, was, was sort of sketched in. Um, there is not in the, in the NASA inventory at present uh, a suitable small RTG. Uh, this is a key sort of enabling uh, aspect for not only this uh, particular implementation, but any idea for a long duration uh, small geophysics package. You, you need a suitable radioisotope power source, perhaps something rather smaller than the ASRGs that are um, presently, if you like, in the, uh, in the catalog. Um, so the, um, the geosource concept was, was very particular to the specific implementation of TSSM in, the, in that there was this sort of quote-unquote existing heat shield uh, opportunity and it seemed that it might be in fact possible to, to conduct useful geophysics with uh, instrumentation incorporated on it. Um, but I wanted to also note that uh, these geophysics measurements could be made by a small dedicated lander uh, in, in other scenarios. Volume ratio. Um, how can, especially if you have that funny shape where it's very, you know, has a very large uh, surface area on the top there. I mean, how can you even keep that thing warm enough, or do you just operate it ambient? One watt electrical, uh, eight and a half watt thermal. Um, so eight, eight watts is not a lot, but it's not, you know, if you have uh, vacuum insulation, um, whether aerogel does it, there wasn't enough time to do a full up uh, thermal analysis. Um, but you're dead right, the smaller things get, uh, the bigger challenge it is to, to keep them warm enough to function. Uh, could you use like an RHU or something like that to keep it warm? Um, RHUs individually give you one, one watt extra. So you'd need, you know, 10 RHUs to give you the supplemental um, heating that the, the one radioisotope power source would give you. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's still the, the fundamental problem. The smaller, th smaller you get, the easier it is to, to lose heat. Mm -hmm. Question, can you work upside down? The, um, the, the question was, can, can it work uh, upside down? Um, I, I actually removed a, a slide addressing that. Um, short answer is not in the configuration that was shown. Um, if you put patch antennas on the front of the heat shield, then yes, they could radiate um, RF energy upwards, but they'd get cooked during the entry. Um, so this, this did re rather rely on the uh, attitude stability, uh, which is not perfect, uh, of, of the conical entry shell. Uh, that's, that's an area that would have required some testing. One could imagine a writing mechanism, some sort of arm that you know, flips the thing over if it, if it turns turtle, if you like. Uh, but that's a complication that would really um, make the thing a lot more expensive and challenging.